The Lord be with you. I always wonder if you talk back at the screen wherever you're at and uh, respond, and also with you, but I'll tell you, it's good to be with you in worship today. Uh, thanks for being with us here at St. Peter Lutheran Church in Schaumburg, Illinois. And as we worship today, we are in the season of Pentecost. It's the long season of green pyramids where we uh, really focus on the Holy Spirit at work in our lives as uh, he points us to Jesus as our ultimate source of hope. And so in today's gospel reading, we'll see that Jesus sends the 12 disciples out for a little bit of OJT. And if you don't know what that means, just wait and you will learn what it means. So with that, I pray God's blessings on your worship this day. And we'll begin as we sing the opening hymn, Heart the Voice of Jesus Calling. invite you to please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made, who made heaven, heaven and, and earth. earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But, but with, with you there is forgiveness, forgiveness. Therefore, therefore you are feared. Since we are gathered to hear God's word, Call upon him in prayer and praise. Let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Together we pray. 
Almighty God, God, have have mercy mercy upon us, forgive us us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I announce the grace of God unto all of you, that your sins are forgiven. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. with you and also with you let us pray almighty eternal god in the word of your apostles and prophets you have proclaimed to us your saving will grant us faith to believe your promises that we may receive eternal salvation through jesus christ our lord who lives and reigns with you and the holy spirit one god now and forever 
Amen. You may be seated. Our first reading this day is taken from Exodus, the 19th chapter, beginning at verse 2. The people of Israel set out from Rephidim and came into the wilderness of Sinai, and they encamped in the wilderness. There Israel encamped before the mountain, while Moses went up to God. The Lord called to him out of the mountain, saying, Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob, and tell the people of Israel, You yourselves have seen what I did to the Egyptians, and how I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now, therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, you shall be my treasured possession among all peoples, for all the earth is mine, and you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words that you shall speak to the people of Israel. So Moses came and called the elders of the people and set before them all these words that the Lord had commanded him. All the people answered together and said, All that the Lord has spoken, we will do. And Moses reported the words of the people to the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our second reading chosen for this day is taken from Romans, the fifth chapter, beginning at verse 6. For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. For one will scarcely die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person one would dare even to die. But God shows his love for us in that, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since, therefore, we have now been justified by his blood, much more shall we be saved by him from the wrath of God. For if while we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his Son, much more, now that we are reconciled, shall we be saved by his life. More than that, we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. Therefore, just as sin came into the world through one man, and death through sin, and so death spread to all men because all sinned, for sin indeed was in the world before the law was given. But sin is not counted where there is no law. Yet death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those whose sinning was not like the transgression of Adam, who was a type of the one of the one who was to come. But the free gift is not like the trespass. For if many died through one man's trespass, much more have the grace of God and the free gift by the grace of of that one man, Jesus Christ, abounded for many. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Gospel according to Matthew, the ninth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. And Jesus went throughout all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom and healing every disease and every affliction. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. And he called to him his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal every disease and every affliction. The names of the twelve apostles are these. First, 
Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, James, the son of Zebedee, and John, his brother, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector, James, the son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus, Simon, the zealot, and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out, instructing them, Go nowhere among the Gentiles, and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, and proclaim as you go, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You received without paying, give without pay. Acquire no gold or silver or copper for your belts, no bag for your journey, or two tunics, or sandals, or a staff, for the laborer deserves his food. And whatever town or village you enter, find out who is worthy in it, and stay there until you depart. As you enter the house, greet it. And if the house is worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. And if anyone will not receive you or listen to your words, shake off the dust from your feet when you leave that house or town. Truly I say to you, it will be more bearable on that day of judgment for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah than for that town. Behold, I am sending you out as sheep in the midst of wolves, so be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Beware of men, for they will deliver you over to courts and flog you in their synagogues, and you will be dragged before governors and kings for my sake, to bear witness before them and the Gentiles. When they deliver you over, do not be anxious how you are to speak or what you are to say, for what you are to say will be given to you in that hour, for it is not you who speak, but the Spirit of your Father speaking through you. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And now you may be seated as we continue with our hymn of the day, God loved the world so that he gave. Please pray with me. Father in heaven, as we gather this day, we pray that you would prepare our hearts and minds to embrace your word, that your spirit would be at work in us, that we would be pointed to the hope that we have in Jesus Christ and be led to carry that hope to the world. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 
Well, as we begin this message, I want to tell you, it begins on kind of a, a really a grim note, but I want to help you just see the brokenness of the world. And to know the brokenness of the world, I don't think we have to go that far because we just have to ask ourselves, what breaks our heart? What is it that breaks your heart? I've got a list of things here just to reflect on. What breaks your heart? Does it break your heart to see people jobless? And we know that joblessness happened before the pandemic, but it's worse now than it was. Does it break your heart to see independent businesses close? And yes, we concern about the, ourselves about restaurants and other businesses, but, uh, and you know me, or most of you do, I love my Mexican food, and one of my Texas Mexican places came here to Schaumburg. I was so excited that Chewy's opened, and yet Chewy's is closed. And it's not about me and what I like, it's about those employees who have lost their jobs. Does it break your heart to see graduates without, well, graduation as, as we know it? Does it break your heart to see weddings postponed or even just canceled because the venues are all closed? Let's sh shift gears a little bit. Does it break your heart to see racism and civil unrest? Does it break your heart to see innocent people killed? Sometimes, well, these people that are not so innocent, but yet are killed even though it's an unjust death. And then you've got other people on the other side that are innocent, and there's loss of life. Do you, uh, does it break your heart to see law enforcement professionals that have given their life to public service now harassed and, and threats of defunding coming across? Why? Just because of the actions of a few? Let's shift gears again. Does it break your heart to see people in the third world starving and without the resources to fight this pandemic? It breaks my heart to know that many of the aid agencies that exist are unable to fulfill their mission simply because there's no way to do so safely. Does it break your heart to see older adults separated from their families because they live in skilled nursing facilities or, or retirement homes. I know it breaks my heart. I can't imagine the loneliness of being separated from those who we love the most. See, these heartbreakers are all proof of a broken world. Evidence of a broken world. We don't have to look that far. We never have. We just ask, have to ask ourselves, perhaps, what, what breaks our heart? And Satan, Satan has a field day with this stuff, especially for people like you and me who walk in faith of Jesus Christ because if he can distract us enough, if he can, ask, if he can get us to ask that question, why would God allow this to happen? Then he would achieve separating the faithful from their faith. Well, you need to know that Jesus lived in a broken world as well. It was broken in a lot of ways. It was broken spiritually. It was broken physically. His ministry was about, yes, bringing healing to the sick, and yet the most important thing was that people were spiritually healed as well. I watched just a few nights ago, uh, not the full movie. I caught it probably midway, the movie Gladiator. That movie's like 20 years old now. And I love that movie, but I, it, the setting of that movie is almost two centuries after... Jesus came into this world, and yet the movie depicted the Roman culture, and, and the spirituality is, is, is uh, it's there, but it's all about the afterlife and, and polytheism and, and a hope of a world after this one that has no connection to Jesus Christ. And I've got to believe that when Jesus walked this earth, and, and especially with the Greek influence, that would have been a lot of the people. He had people, the Jews, who he, he was a Jew himself, and the Jews that denied him being the Christ. And then you have the Gentiles that were just worshiping other gods. And, and I'm sure he looked at all of that. He, we know he looked at the, the people in their physical ailments, and that broke his heart, but the thing that broke his heart the most was people who were disconnected 
from the hope that they have through Him. And so Jesus was brokenhearted, certainly. As a matter of fact, we see that today in chapter 9, verse 36 of Matthew's Gospel. It says, when Jesus saw the crowds, He had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. He had compassion. His heart was broken for them. And if you remember, they, well, they, why was it? Because they were like sheep without a shepherd. They were lost. They were aimlessly living their lives. And well, compassion, if you remember, stirs action. And he did put, well, some people into action. The 12 disciples. It was time for the 12 disciples to get some OJT, some on-the-job training and so we see in the 10th chapter of Matthew's Gospel, his instruction to them was quite simple, what they were supposed to do. It says in verse 8, Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. That's it. You know, heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse lepers, cast out demons. And, and he gave them a lot of instruction as they were to go. And this sounds like a, a glorious task at hand. But then there was the challenging side of it as well. He says in verse 16, Behold, I am sending you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. So be wise as serpents and innocent as doves. Beware of men, for they will deliver you over to courts and flog you in their synagogues. And you will be dragged before governors and kings for my sake to bear witness before them and the Gentiles. <laughs> there comes the bad stuff. The good stuff, they were going to get to do some stuff with God working through them to bring healing and well-being to people, but then they were also cautioned that there would be persecution in their midst. He says it again, though, in verse 26, Have no fear of them, for nothing is covered that will not be revealed, or hidden that will not be known. What I tell you in the dark, say in the light, what you hear whispered, proclaim on the housetops, and do not fear those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Rather, fear Him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Don't fear the people of this world, just proclaim the gospel, but fear Satan's goal. That's what he's saying, who can destroy the soul and the body. Because remember, Satan's goal is to separate us from the hope that we have in Jesus Christ. And the distractions in this world are one of the great tools he can use to do so. So as we carry the gospel, we see a broken world. That was our point to start today. And we can't get distracted. But instead, we need to recognize that, well, it's a broken world and persecution can happen. Christian persecution, I, you know, we really don't know Christian persecution in the United States, not to the level that others do in other countries. I read an article just a few days ago about Churches in uh, uh, Nevada, in Las Vegas, are, are suing to open their doors because the casinos are open, but the churches can't have more than 50 people in them. And, and we would call that a level of Christian persecution. But uh, other countries, people are losing their lives. They're martyrs as a result. In Nigeria, I have had articles come across my computer time and time again about people who are losing their lives, and this one was very personal. Reverend Emmanuel Saba Belea and his bride Juliana, they were on their farm, and they were out working in the fields when a crew came through and gunned them down, leaving behind eight children between, between the ages of one and 19 years old, and it's purported that the Boko Haram jihadists are the ones who carried out this act. It's unfortunate, but that's the warning that Jesus had for us. And thanks be to God that uh, Pastor Belea and his bride Juliana, they never gave up faith. They held strong, carrying Jesus Christ until God called them home. <laughs> so, are you ready for some on-the-job training? There are good results that come out of putting ourselves out there. Now, for whatever reason, Matthew's Gospel doesn't tell you what the disciples did. They were just sent out. But we go to Mark's Gospel, 
And we see very simply it says after they it says so they went out and proclaimed that people should repent, and they cast out many demons and anointed with many uh, oil, anointed with oil many who were sick, and healed them. And so they proclaimed a repentance and they brought healing to people, and but through the anointing of oil in Luke's gospel, Luke says very simply, and they departed and went throughout the villages preaching the gospel, and healing everywhere. See, here's the basic truth. If, if they had never tried, nothing would have happened. But they trusted that God was at work through them in order to touch the lives of others. So in spite of the challenge, the gospel was preached. People were healed. And on job training, well, it was accomplished. One of my favorite books, or really one of my favorite authors, is John Ortberg. He's a great teacher, and he's an easy read. And I love this book, If You Want to Walk on Water, You've Got to Get Out of the Boat. This, too, is about 20 years old, I think. But uh, uh, I, I just love his manner of teaching. And this is what he has to say about, well, engaging ministry and God working through us to accomplish amazing things. He says... For one who believes in God, the hinge point is not simply what I'm capable of. The real question is what God might do through me. And then in quotes, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Close quote. Now this is not a blank check. In writing these words, the Apostle Paul did not intend for us to understand that being a Christian means that I can hit more home runs than Mark McGuire and hit higher notes than Pavarotti. It means I have great confidence that I can face whatever life throws at me, that I never need to give up, that my efforts have potency. Why? Because of the one at work within me. Doesn't that give you assurance to know that when we're in on-job training, when we're in this world and we don't always know what we're doing, it, doing but we're doing it for the cause of Christ and, and it's God at work through us. We're never on our own. The Spirit is leading and guiding. And God, well, He's doing His thing. It doesn't mean it's going to be easy. But you know what? We know the hope that we have in Jesus Christ, and the world needs to know that hope. We know the hope that comes through faith, knowing that Jesus uh, in His death and resurrection rescued us from this broken world so we can live life in this broken world, sometimes even through the hardships and the trials, always with that certain promise that because Jesus lives, we shall live also. So bad things, they do happen. Persecution, it happens. But Jesus, well, Jesus and carrying Him to others is really the most important thing. It is the sole most important thing in our lives. So what I want to do is I'm going to close with you in Romans chapter 5. Pastor Greg read a uh, latter text, but this is what precedes it. And I think this just wraps it up in a nutshell. Paul writes, beginning at the first verse, Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Through Him we have also obtained access by faith into this grace in which we stand. And we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. More than that, we rejoice in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope. And hope does not put us ashamed, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who has been given us. Amen. And may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds. In Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. This time I invite you to go ahead and stand as we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. Together we confess, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. 
The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Of course, you may be seated. This time, then, also, we take opportunity to uh, collect our offerings and tithes unto the Lord as we return that portion back to him as he so graciously has given to us. Prayers of the Church. Let us pray. O oh, good and gracious Heavenly Father, today we ask and pray that uh, as we hear about the on the job training, Father, we know that you would help us to be a witness of hope to this world, that we may go in every city, village, and home across this great world that you have made. Father, that we may bring the good news of your Son, Jesus Christ, that everyone may hear the truth and the way to come to you. Help us to continue to share that good news with all that we know. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray today, Heavenly Father, for all of us in this nation. Uh, and again, we pray for those who are governing this country. We continually seek out peace and justice, Father, that we may truly know the peace that comes from you. And so, Heavenly Father, we pray that uh, all would be given grace and freedom to serve you, and honor, not only honorably, but uh, also in accord with your word. Today, Lord, we lift up, uh, especially in our military, Kyle Peterson and Theodore Rogers, continue to bless them as they are a blessing to our nation. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Today, Heavenly Father, we are praying for those families who are hurting at this time as um, you have called to your own, your children. And we ask and pray, Lord, that you be with the family of Cheyenne Johnson, with the family of Shirley Shire, with the family of John Vogt, and for the family of Sue Wins. Lord, continue to bless them and uh, give them your peace and comfort as only you can provide, reminding them that, Lord, one day they will see each other again and uh, we will all be with you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our hear prayer. prayer. Today, Heavenly Father, we lift up those who are poor and hungry, for the homeless and those who are unemployed. We pray for those who have been oppressed in whichever way it might be. Father, that you would continually grant them mercy by the grace of your Lord and Savior, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and that, uh, Lord, their suffering may be relieved. Uh, continue to bless and keep them in your care. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Today, Heavenly Father, we are praying for those who are sick, those who are needing your healing touch upon them, that you continually uh, be with them and guide them, direct them as they go through this time of trial. Today, we lift up Mylon Bagal, uh, June Fanslow, Debbie Bodner, Gary Albrand, Karen Mueller, Jean Newman, John Schrader, and Chris Herrera. Lord, continue to bless and keep them all in your care. They may know your loving hand upon them. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Today, Heavenly Father, we lift up all those that are celebrating the gift of life. Uh, last week, Lord, uh, Ryan Milan celebrated his 23rd birthday. And uh, this week, uh, coming up, is uh, Mil Milan Bagal and Keith Adeus, uh, Katie Arthur, and Mark Wilcox. Lord, we thank you for the gift of life that you have given them. Continually help them to live out lives worthy of your calling as they serve you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Father, we thank you for hearing us this day. We know that uh, we come to you in all times and all places and that you do hear us. Help us to live as your own people, doing the good works for which we were created. And also, Lord, as we offer those prayers, help us to have that confidence, knowing that you will hear and answer us according to your will. Bless us as we go from this place that truly we may be a blessing. Thank you for hearing our prayers. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now together we pray our family prayer. Our Father, 
who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and all God's children say, Amen. Amen. Today as we uh, leave, I have a few announcements for you. I wanted to remind you that um, not only are you obviously enjoying these hopefully services then uh, from St. Peter Lutheran uh, Church in Schaumburg, Illinois as this uh, takes place, but also then we are opening up the church for in-person services. And so we'd love to be able to see you there as well. We're making sure that we're taking the precautionary measures of safe distancing and uh, sanitizing and cleansing the uh, uh, um, sanctuary as well. So just wanted to make sure that that's an opportunity for you as well. Also, a great reminder that virtual VBS is starting on Monday, June 15th. That's right. Uh, you can go there and, and see the stories, hear the songs, uh, even do crafts. And uh, it's so cool to be able to see this. We, we made some uh, alterations at the beginning to make sure that we could still participate in VBS during this time. So we'll do it safely, and uh, you can do it then uh, in your uh, choice location. And so, again, just take a look at that. If you need any for more information, just go to our website, and you can see that as well. And then finally, let's see here. I, I think there was one more thing. Oh yeah, that's right. It's this. Mario, we've been uh, driving a long time. We need to find a place to eat. Uh, what do you want to do tonight? I don't know, but I feel like a pizza pie. If I could get one. A pizza pie? Well, how what? about we go to Luminati? Oh, yeah, yeah that'd, that'd be, be wonderful. They have a wonderful pizza pie. They have a wonderful pasta. They've got the salad. They got the libation. Although this is fundraiser, so no profit on libation. Look at that. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and we're not driving. I get so hungry. This is the place to go. This it's is only... the place for us to be. It's and for pizza. you too, coming on Monday, yeah. be here. Oh. Raise money for St. Peter Lutheran School. Tell them that that's here, what you're here for. And if you order online, you need a code. Where do they find the code? On the website, or oh, I've got it right here. It's funds, S or F U N D S T P L 2 O. Go to the website. It's a lot easier than me trying to talk through my mustache. Uh, all right. So, with that, raise a slice for a good cause. All right. Sounds good. <laughs>
Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to God. God.